My name is Sarah. I have a son named Isaiah. He's eight. And in 2020, with the pandemic, we started struggling. And then in 2021, I got into a car accident and it made it even worse. So I reached out to the resource center so that I could get help paying rent at least because it was hard to get it anywhere else because we're in a black hole as the other resource places explained it to me. Pretty much anywhere besides Lake Stevens, they say they can only do it in either their area or we just don't qualify. Sarah and her family started coming to us a few years ago when we first opened our doors here in Lake Stevens. And so I met with her and we chatted for a while and you know we were able to help her. Uh, throughout the years, her case manager was transferred to Miss Elizabeth Miller, and now she's been with Elizabeth for about two and a half years. We're all like best friends immediately. They loved my son, they loved me, and it was my new safe place to go. Even without needing resources, I could just go there if I had a crisis. Well, shortly, sometime after 2021, my husband had had a job and we lost our food stamps. So I came in crises, freaked out, crying, how am I gonna feed my family, especially my child? And they were immediately giving me vouchers to go get food from Fred Meyer and checking our other bills and seeing where they could help with that as well. And if they could not, what other resources can they get with their referral? We help families in many different ways. Everyone's crisis is a bit different, of course, as you know. Uh, we are a resource center, so our job is to know what's going on in our community and advocate for you. That is our job. Um, many people call us advocates. Um, I like to call us disruptors. Uh, we're going to make sure that phone keeps ringing until someone answers, and we're going to do it right there with you. Tina and Elizabeth have helped Isaiah with things such as coats, gloves, hats, Christmas gifts, the fire department one year. They physically brought him the toys and brought them into the house for us and everything. And now my son wants to be a firefighter or ambulance driver. They've helped with so many things, a brand new bike, you know, just to give him something to be happy about. Cause he knows that we're low income. I don't hide that from him. I don't feel it's necessary. So it gives him something to look forward to. It gives him something to be excited about. He absolutely adores Tina and Elizabeth so much. And so it's been really positive for him. He has somewhere also safe to go that he knows that he's got two wonderful ladies that will be there in a heartbeat for him or for me. And that takes a lot of stress off the both of us. Sarah has grown incredibly. She's learned how to advocate for herself. She's learned how to use her voice. She's learned how to be an advocate for her son. Her son does live with disabilities and it has been a vicious cycle to help get the services that he needs. If it wasn't for them, we would be homeless right now. We would not have our power on. We would not have Christmas gifts. And I know as much as it's hard sometimes, I try hard to remember that they are here for us and that if I need something, I can just make a single phone call. I'm very proud of Sarah. It takes a lot of courage to uh, reach out and say you need help. Our goal here is to eventually have them not need us, right? To stand on their own two feet, and uh, Sarah's doing that. What would it mean if VOA and the community resource centers were not in our communities? Imagine what we see now times 10. People have a place where they can come to before it gets to the place of homelessness or utilities being shut off, where they feel safe, welcomed and not judged. So together, we can continue moving in the right direction, but it does take all of us.